video, we are going to learn about the mathematics of quantum mechanics. In my previous video, I have discussed about complex numbers and most importantly why complex numbers are used in quantum physics. In today's video, we are going to look primarily into the operations part of complex numbers, how we can do certain addition and multiplication and other operations. Most importantly, we are going to introduce and learn about the concept of complex conjugate and because complex conjugate is an important tool, we should learn also that why do we need complex conjugate and how it helps to solve the problems and mathematics of quantum mechanics. So I would be using a simple wave function and I will demonstrate how complex conjugates are not at all complex but they are fairly simple things and I will use a simple example in quantum mechanics to demonstrate that complex conjugate is useful and it is very simple in order to go and understand the roots of the mathematics of quantum mechanics. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. A warm welcome to the second lesson of this series Mathematics of Quantum Mechanics. Let us go and find out what are the topics that we are covering today. So what we are doing is that we are covering up first the addition and the multiplications of complex numbers. Then we will understand what is a complex conjugate, examples with complex conjugate and most importantly the need of a complex conjugate in quantum mechanics. Without understanding the need, it is all just memorizing things and it becomes boring for students without learning the meaning or the reason if you understand the mathematics. We will look into certain wave function and complex conjugate and a very simple example using the concept of quantum mechanics, how complex conjugates can be used. Please note my dear viewers that this uh, basic lesson plan is being made in order to learn more about quantum mechanics, especially the mathematics part. Students who are just willing to learn quantum physics or researchers who are going deep into further studies of quantum physics, it would be essential to know the mathematics so that it becomes easy to further study and you really do not feel bored that what this mathematics is all about. The reason, the understanding and the concept is becoming much clearer as you go ahead with this video. So first what we would do is that we will look into what is a complex addition and a multiplication. So let us consider these two numbers z equals to a plus bi and w equals to c plus di. Then we can define a complex addition as this. Right. So it follows the commutative and other rules which I have not laid it down here. And complex multiplication can be defined as this and this and finally it leads to this AC minus BD plus AD plus BC. Uh, I, uh, we just recall that I square equals to minus 1. Now, uh, just note one thing which is very important is that in this last step, what I have done, we have gathered the real part and the imaginary part together. And the method that is being used uh, for two complex numbers is also referred to as FOIL method or first outer inner last. That is, the first becomes the outer and the inner last. So, this is a usual method in which we do, but this is how we define what is a complex addition and this is how we define what is a complex multiplication. Now, because these concepts are fairly layered out as definition, we will see few examples which will become clear. So, let us take an example z equals to 1 plus 3 and w equals to 2 plus i minus 2 plus i. So, once we go forward and do the addition, it becomes this and when we do the multiplication, it leads to this. So minus 5 of my minus 5 minus 5 and this is to uh, 1 plus 4i. So uh, minus 1 plus 4i. So this is how we do. So now that we know how to add and multiply complex numbers, we will introduce a useful definition and some of the properties. So this might seem a little bit odd at first, but as you will see, that these will become very handy as we solve the problems of quantum mechanics. So the concept that I am introducing first is what is called a complex conjugate. So we define a complex conjugate of a complex number with this symbol z bar or even z with a star or an asterisk. Now this bar is actually called uh, a viniculum, 
Vinculum, which is coming from a Latin word, it is a horizontal line used in mathematical notation for different purposes. It may be placed as an over line or over a mathematical expression to indicate that the expression be considered or grouped together. Historically, vincula were used extensively to, uh, I would say, uh, to take group items together, especially in written mathematics, but in rotten mathematics, the function has almost been replaced by the use of a parenthesis. Vinculum in its general use was first introduced by Franz van Schutten around about 1646. So this is just an interesting history to let you understand that what this bar is and what is the actual name of this bar. So uh, we define the complex conjugate as this one. Let me take the negative and this is basically the complex conjugate of the complex number is the number with an equal real part and an imaginary part in magnitude but it's opposite in sign. So if you plot a kind of a matrix over here and this matrix, so this one is the complex conjugate and this one is the complex conjugate. So what we are doing is that the complex conjugate of one matrix with complex entries in another matrix is entries of the complex conjugates of the other matrix. So this is just to demonstrate on a very simple way how complex conjugate looks like. Okay, there are some of the important properties, but these properties are not definitions. I would just cite you certain simple examples. So, if z equals to 5 plus 10 i, then obviously the complex conjugate will be 5 minus 10 i. If z equals to 3 minus 2 i, then the complex conjugate will be 3 plus 2 i. But here is something important. If z equals to minus 3, then the complex conjugate would be minus 3. That means the complex conjugate of a real number is it itself. That means it repeats the same one. Another important property, if z equals to 2i and it's equals to 0 plus 2i, for example, then the complex conjugate will be minus 2i. So this minus the complex conjugate of an imaginary number is minus itself. So remember that the complex conjugate of an uh, imaginary number is minus itself. These are few of the uh, properties which is worth mentioning. Okay. Now that we have understood what is a complex conjugate, the opposite and the negative, all those things, what we need to understand is that why do we need complex conjugate in quantum mechanics? Now, a complex conjugate is a function, a complex function is one which contains i equal to square root of minus one. Now, if you see that if we go over, once we will go more into the mathematical part or uh, the concepts of quantum mechanics, you will see that wave functions determine the behavior the physical system. Obviously, it is being dominated by wave function. My last video was on momentum of complex uh, of, uh, uh, of, of, of quantum mechanics. So, because wave functions are something which determines the probability of locating an electron or a subatomic particles, these are all complex functions. So, because physicists like uh, anybody of us, we are much more comfortable with real numbers. So, we want to eliminate those. Uh, you know, or complex numbers or using the complex conjugates. So, the probability of a particle, if I find it is in the narrow interval of x and x plus dx, then it is this. And the complex conjugate of a function is obtaining by if we replace every occurrence of i, which is square root of minus 1, in that function with a minus i, then this shows the complex conjugate of the wave function. So, in one word, to cut short all these mathematical intricacies and complications of science and psi and star, is that in order to make mathematics easier, in order to measure experiments which are coming out, we are much more comfortable with the real numbers rather than imaginary numbers. So, we are using complex conjugate in order to eliminate those imaginary numbers so that things become easier. We will soon see a few examples which will lay out the uh, concept much more clear. So, we turn the page and here you see that uh, this one, uh, this one eliminates a complex number. So, this part is actually it produces a real number. Now, say for example, if I use a simple example of a plus 3, uh, a equal to 3 plus pro y, then sorry, this would be right on the top. So, what it would be? Then it would lead to this one, which ultimately leads to c 25 which is a real number and it helps us to create calculation. So simple.
uh, if you use a, this kind of a uh, concept and if we can put up uh, a value like 25, so it becomes easier for us to uh, do calculation. Same goes with quantum mechanics. So what we can say is that the wave function represents basically the probability amplitude for finding a particular particle at a given position. So, uh, yeah. So the actual probability of finding the particle is given by this. So before that, I would like to say that when a real positive definite quantity is needed from a real function, the square of the function is used. In this case, the complex or in the case of complex function, the complex conjugate is used to accomplish this purpose. So the product of a complex number and its complex conjugate to the complex number is analogous to squaring a real function. So the complex conjugate is used in rationalization of complex number. Here you can see that this one is actually showing the probability amplitude and this actually shows the probability which should be 1. And that means that it should be normalized and in order to normalize we know that we use the integration and we get this as 1. So we already get a value that is 1 and if you were using the probability amplitude which is now turning to the probability and for that we are using complex conjugate. So when a real positive, de uh, positive definite quantity is uh, needed from the real function, the square of the function can be used. This was just what I was explaining you. In case of a complex function, the complex conjugate is used to accomplish this purpose and the product of a complex number and this complex conjugate is the complex number analog to a squared real function. So here is an example uh, which shows uh, this one and if I have taken the complex conjugate, you see it returns to this and it further returns to this. Sorry, yeah. So this is just to show you that how these uh, calculations happen. Okay, so I would now finally like to demonstrate with a very, very practical and a simple example of quantum mechanics so that the complex conjugate part be clear. Imagine that this is a free particle and you know what is a free particle, I will define that and it is moving along the x direction. That means uh, if the particle is experiencing no force and so it moves with a constant velocity. Uh, now, what happens is that uh, in, part, in this particular case, the wave function is given by this, right? Okay. So, here I will like to define A as amplitude, K as the wave number and omega as the angular frequency. Now, here comes uh, this part which I have just underlined now, which can be replaced by this gentleman, the great genius Leonard Euler. And Euler's formula says something like this. So E exponential raised to the power I theta can be used as cos theta plus I sine theta. So I am using this red underlined one and I am replacing it with this. Right? So A E to raised to the power Kx minus omega t which ultimately leads to this. Now you might be wondering now what this phi is all about. Okay. So this part is quite clear. Right? So for a free particle. The wave function and using Euler's formula is being replaced by this. So this one is what is called a phase angle. Don't worry if you don't understand phase angle. I will explain it in the next video. So if the this wave function varies very slowly, very minutely over an interval delta x, the probability of finding the particle of that interval would be this. I know it's a fairly <laughs> a big equation, but you can check on the calculations later which is approximately would be equal to this, I'm not saying it would, would be equal to this. Now here I would consider A uh, which has got its complex parts, I mean to say A plus IB where A and B are the real constants then I get the value as this. So this here you now find that the entire uh, imaginary, sorry the complex part has vanished, right? So the complex part has vanished and its real quantity. So yeah, so this is the real point. So this example actually shows you that how the using complex conjugate, once we use that A star A, that means we are conjugating, complex conjugating that, the uh, complex part are vanished and what remains is the real part. And in reality, 
this in part this this function a function can be defined as a probability density that ensures the prediction of quantum mechanics in comparison which can be checked with the real world that means it can be checked with the experimental evidence that finds in the real part that is the beauty that is the reason that is the sole purpose of making today's video that to demonstrate you with simple examples how we complex conjugate and how these things vanishes i mean to say the real the complex part vanishes really right and we will see that uh, the uh, real value comes which becomes easier uh, for us to calculate so the complex number vanishes and the real part helps us in further calculations here coming up is a small kind of a, i would say a trivia or a fact that leonard euler actually introduced was a great mathematician physicist astronomer established the fundamental relation between trigonometric functions and exponential we just saw the rule and these introduce much of modern mathematical terminology and notation including the notion of mathematical function is also known for his works in mechanics fluid even in music theory now we know that leonard euler actually went blind due to some problems in his uh, in his eyes and when he was asked that how do you react or what do you feel about his one eye and he can only see through one of his eyes he replied this now i will have less distraction so in the next part of the video what i'm going to do is that i'm going to cover up a little bit about complex division and we will straight away move to euler's formula and then the polar formula because these are equally important in quantum mechanics and then we will start with the third or maybe the fourth series of linear algebra and the importance and the usage of linear algebra in quantum mechanics thank you for watching this video please put up a thumbs up and click on the like click on the bell icon and do subscribe to my channel please feel free to comment and communicate with me because i will always try to make things much more fun loving interesting for those who are learning physics and mathematics this is shonak signing off from physics for students promising you to be back very soon with another interesting video on physics and mathematics till then stay happy eat healthy be safe and continue learning physics and mathematics goodbye thank you for watching this video we appreciate your time and patience if you want to connect with us and provide further feedback comment or suggestions please email us at contact.physicsforstudents@gmail.com You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.